uh, Mrs. Shannon Will to come on up. She is our district and AHS librarian. She serves that role, and I think we've noticed on our learning walks especially the important role that our libraries play um, on our campuses and live into the exact resolution that you just read, Ms. Chavez. So take it away, Shannon. Uh, before I get started, I just want to thank the board and the executive team, as well as my own administration, for being so supportive and encouraging me to, you know, advocate for the libraries and share all the wonderful things that happen across the district libraries. Um, just a, short, a little brief introduction. Uh, prior to being a librarian, I was a high school English and AVID teacher. And I also served two years as an instructional coach. Uh, prior to coming to Arcadia, I was a high school I was a, a high school librarian as well as a K-8 librarian. I hold two credentials: the single subject English credential as well as a teacher librarian credential. I also have a master's in library and information science. So I would like to start with the elementary library program. Um, we have six fabulous library staff members. Um, one is right here. She's featured on this slide as well, <laughs> Ms. Jan Brown. And at, across our sites, our elementary sites, we serve uh, 3,720 students each week. Uh, this slide features um, just a visual. You get, a, you get the sense that um, students are engaged, they're curious, they're exploring. Um, we have wonderful environments for our students. Um, you can see some of them are listening to a story. They're getting comfy. Um, it's just a great place to be. Uh, I'd like to highlight um, Holly Avenue as an example of one of our elementary sites. Um, oftentimes, people assume you know a library is it's a room of books, and that's it. Um, but uh, Miss Engel at, at Holly Avenue. Uh, holds contests. Um, she reaches out to community uh, resources, such as our public library, uh, having displays of student work. Um, there's some statistics on the side there. She's circulated over, over 36,000 books uh, this school year. Um, some statistics about books purchased. And then the last stat there is uh, books weeded over the past four years. Uh, I, I realize that weeding is kind of a li it's library jargon. Um, it's just a tool that librarians use um, to update their collection, um, you know, making sure that the, the books and resources are relevant for our students. Moving on to middle school, and we are well represented. All three middle school library staff are here. Cheryl Tarsala, Donna Noda, and Lisa Lucas. Um, at our middle school sites, we serve uh, 2,110 students each week at our middle schools. And so this gives you a, just a small glimpse um, of what's happening at the middle schools. I know at First Avenue, for example, they just opened the Makerspace, which is an extension of the library, which is really awesome. I can't wait to see it in person. Um, we have displays. Um, this display Donna created, and she reached out to the teachers at her school, the admin at her school, she reached out to me, she reached out to uh, Dr. Vanazdal, um, and seeing students seeing teachers and you know their own superintendent who they you know they might not even know who that is um, with a book in hand you know really promotes the culture of reading um, which is great and then we have the annual book battles so this was from last year uh, we hosted at the high school and we're going to host it again at the high school and it's such a cool activity um, if you can make it what day is it? May I think it's May. It's at the end of May. Um, basically, the students um, are given a list of books, and they're on teams, and they're asked questions about these books, and it's very, very exciting. And it's it was a cool experience for me. I'd never seen it before. Uh, moving on to the high school, um, I'm Shannon. My awesome assistant, Gabby Torres, um, works along with me. I wouldn't be able to, to run the library without her. Uh, we serve 3,050 students each week at, at the at, at AHS. You know that varies depending on the season, what's going on. Uh, during registration for the 22-23 school year, we checked out 13,234 textbooks. Of course, that was with the help of our awesome parent volunteers. Uh, but that just gives you a sense of the volume that's going on at the library. 
Um, there's our Instagram handle in case you'd like to follow. Uh, so collaboration um, is really at the heart of the library, um, not only with students, um, but with, with staff members. So featured here, I'm with uh, Dr. Deja Anderson and Joanna Moreno, our new college and career counselor. Um, we have a very close partnership with the Wellness Center. Uh, we host um, crafts. We, um, we ran a ninth grade orientation uh, this year together. So there were small groups and we were able to tell the students what resources were available. It was very successful. Um, we also develop, you know, when I'm thinking of ordering books, um, I'll touch base with her and say, you know, what's going with our students? You know, what do you think, what do you think that they need? Um, so there's some fiction books that maybe have characters that are dealing with things like depression or anxiety. So instruction, you know, at, at the core, I am a teacher and I love teaching. It's so much fun to be able to work with teachers. Um, I provide, this is this like a little library menu of, of different lessons, um, research, information literacy, digital citizenship, it goes on and on. Um, featured in the middle, I work with the special education department quite often. And there I am in the classroom. Sometimes I'm in the classroom, sometimes I'm teaching in the library, so I'll go wherever I need it. So <clears throat> our students are one-to-one -one with the Chromebooks. Tech support is essential. And I definitely could not do that without the support of TIS. Um, specifically at our site, we have Nancy Sager and Ben Sager. Um, we started a student tech intern program this year, and they work specifically with um, Nancy and Ben, and they help to repair devices. It gives them valuable experience, and, and they get to work with teachers, so they get kind of like customer service, and it's, it's been incredible, and I look forward to growing that program. Um, uh, I also assist with, we have, um, as you know, more and more textbooks are being digitized, so providing support for teachers um, and students alike. Uh, we have, printers are one of our most popular items in the library. Uh, we average about 70 daily print jobs, and as you know, printers don't always work the way we want them to, so that's, that happens. Um, collection development. So this is, you know, when we're thinking of what, what books to add to our collection, um, there are tools in place where we can audit our collection, you know, and see if there's any gaps, for example, um, in, our, in our fiction section, in our fantasy section, specifically in that genre. You know, maybe we're, we're lacking some books with um, characters that are Asian American, for example. So we can see where we can fill in some gaps, which is very useful. Um, these are, this is one page, an example of a visual book list. This is something I started in the summer, and this has been a really cool tool. We have it physically and we have it digitally, and for some students, you know, might be reluctant readers, um, going into the library can be very, very intimidating, so they just see a bunch of books. So we have something that they can thumb through and look based on theme in terms of what they want to read. This one is found family. Um, also, professional development. Um, I love learning. Uh, I recently, and along with some of my other colleagues, uh, attended uh, Reinvigorating Nonfiction. So we are looking for ways to further engage and just make the library a better place for our students and staff. So the library environment uh, featured here is a book tasting. Um, I know some of you have seen that in action. Uh, we do speed dating with books, uh, blind date with a book, which is so popular, it's, it was very unexpected. We had to keep wrapping up books because they were just, they were just grabbing them. Um, dynamic shelving, so there's kind of a trend to make libraries more like bookstores, um, to make it easier for students to look for books. Um, so we're always learning, you know, changing the ways that we, we present materials and resources. Um, and also our displays, of course. I love, I love making bulletin boards. I wish that, you know, that was sometimes like all I, all I did was design bulletin boards. Uh, this one was for Native American Heritage Month, and it was very cool, and it was cool to, to, I actually ordered a few more books, and you know, students will stop, and there was a book list that was uh, placed on that display as well, and then they're curious, and there's a QR code to look at the California tribes that were in the area. So library programming. Um, this just gives you an idea of, you know, if you come into the library on any given day, you're going to see a lot of different things. You're going to see 
kids playing Uno competitively. Uh, you're going to see different crafts. Um, for the uh, mid-autumn festival, we did a moon cake craft, which was really fun. And then some kids were like, what's a, you know, what's, mo what's a moon cake? So we were able to kind of explain what that was, and it was exciting. And then the perler bead, if you see at the top, that is probably our top. Um, mo that's our most popular craft, but it's very time consuming because if you've ever done it, you have to iron, and my poor TAs are, you know, like, oh my gosh, how many do I have to iron? Um, but we just put, we put the materials out, we explain the craft, and kids just flock to it. You know, I was worried, okay, we're going to put it out and no one's going to show up, and it, that's never the case. Um, so the library's community, um, I work with a lot of different departments and programs on campus. Uh, for example, the TPP and workability programs. Um, through these programs, we have seven paid student workers that are, some of them are featured here. And so they get trained on various skills. They uh, do different tasks in the library to help us. And you know, not only does it build uh, those skills, but it also builds confidence. Um, it's really fun to work with them. And you can tell, you know, they get more, you know, I'm their, I'm their boss, I'm their supervisor, I evaluate them, and, you know, they're always asking questions, and it's, it's, a, really, it's a really great thing that we have in there. Um, student Library Advisory Committee was something that a student approached me about last year. So we're growing that. They assist with crafts, they volunteer before school. Um, it's really great. So I have a lot of, um, there's a lot of potential with that group as well. Um, and then student-led workshops. So the crafts that I was mentioning, uh, we had a, cr a crochet workshop uh, right before spring break, and that was led purely by students. They wanted to do it. We had all the materials. That was a collaboration with the Wellness Center. And again, we put everything out. We had a screen, we had a dot cam, and students were curious, and they would sit down, and some, some were unsure, and then they just sat down and uh, Dr. Dillman joined us as well. It was really cool. So looking forward to next year and beyond, I have a lot of ideas. Um, so kind of harnessing that and leveraging um, different groups and programs. Uh, the picture on the right is the Food Science Club approached me about doing a scavenger hunt in the library. And so we did it and it was there were, I think, 40 kids running around the library, and they were looking, they had to look at certain, for certain recipes and, and the cookbooks that we had, and they were really into it. It was really fun. Um, the bottom picture, bottom left, is our uh, app development team. Um, thank you, Mr. Gazanian, for um, spearheading that as well and supporting that. Um, these students created, I don't know if you can see it on the counter, um, we piloted uh, these scanners, so kids can use a, the app and a digital ID to scan to check out books. Um, so that's been really cool. And you know, if, if something's not working, I just email one of the kids, and they come by and repair it. So it's the students develop the app, the students develop the actual scanner. Um, and the last thing is just you know amplified, amplifying student voice um, and making sure that their voices are heard and represented in the library. Um, just some quick numbers, so March 2022 to March 2023, uh, we had 319,680 unique student visits to our libraries, 207,348 books were checked out, um, and our, the average age of our books is 2002. So the last uh, few slides here, um, I thought, you know, I want to put a survey out you know, tell us what you love about the library. And I sent it to all of the sites. And I wasn't expecting many responses. And in the Arcadia way, there's was, there was over 1,400 responses and growing. Um, so I'll, I'll be honest, it's hard to look through all of them. Um, but I picked out a few. Um, even, you know, teachers were encouraged to also respond. And I think oftentimes we forget that teachers also, you know, utilize the library. Um, and our staff. So I, I'll read one of these off of this slide. Uh, I love that our school library is just a really safe and special room where students can dive into new stories and just spend their free time. So a common theme was, you know, choice, freedom, you know, just, you know, being, getting kind of to just relax and decompress. 
Um, that was Abby at Foothills. Uh, there's uh, Felix at Holly Avenue. They have all the books I want, and you can renew for free. <laughs> So that was a, f a, a few of the elementary students responded, responded that way that I can get as many books as I want for free. And you know, that's really priceless. So we have some other, some other quotes um, from other students. And I will end the presentation with um, Julia from RK High School. I, so articulate. Um, I feel protected and supported at school, more engaged and do better academically because school librarians create judgment-free learning environments, organize resources that enhance student health and well-being, and encourage students to read for pleasure. School librarians create a variety of collections that pave the way so all students can also better understand themselves and their surroundings. School librarians encourage me to embrace inquiry and learn independ independently by doing so. So that, I really feel like that sums it all up. And there's a QR code um, if you would like to go through the 1,400 responses in your free time. Oh, um, I, there's some really fun, there's some funny ones. Because it's elementary through the high school. And we've got responses across the board. Um, and that's, that's it. Here's a few more shots from the library. Um, it's, a, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be in the library. Um, I think it's the best place on campus, and I pinch myself sometimes that I get to, that's my job. Thank you. We, we talk a lot about our libraries, and obviously we, we see these comments, um, but you can't separate the spaces as, as a library from the people that breathe life into them. So. Um, it really has been impressive this year as we've been at the different sites for our board learning walks to just see how vibrant the libraries are, how many resources are being provided, um, not just the environment itself, but uh, the, the resources that are curated for the kids to take away. So uh, just thank you for everything you do day in and day out for our kids. Appreciate it.